Uh, good afternoon. I want to welcome everyone to this uh, lecture in our <laughs> alumni leadership lecture series. Our speaker today is uh, Dr. C. Mohan. Um, he's a, a BTEC 1977 from IIT Madras, and he had got his PhD in computer science from UT Austin and joined IBM San Jose uh, Research, Almaden Research in 1981. Um, he and I are longtime friends. Um, also had a uh, little bit of an overlap in our careers at IBM. He has been there from 81 till today. I was there from 88 to 2003. Um, but I was a chemical engineer throughout my stay at IBM, so he didn't have much to do with uh, Mohan technically. I do want to mention that he is a distinguished alumnus of uh, IIT Madras, um, one of only about 100, 102, I think, as of now, out of 40,000. He's also an IBM fellow, and he was chief scientist for IBM India till uh, 2009 when he returned to Almaden and, and resumed his research activities. I think uh, Mohan is going to give you a pretty good uh, picture about his life and career, so <laughs> I won't say any more. Mohan. Okay. Thank you, Professor Nagarajan. Um, I don't know. For whatever reason, it's taking too long to come. Uh, I had put it in the hibernate state. and. Recently, PGP had to be installed, encryption for the whole disk. I don't know whether that's the reason it takes so long. Uh, IBM required that uh, we had to do that, and I waited till the last minute. So <laughs> I had no choice uh, a few days ago for it to be allowed to go through. Um, as was mentioned, I um, have been at IBM for now 31 years. I started out as a chemical engineering guy. 72 to 77, five-year B.Tech, right? Um, and at that time, uh, when I started, there was no computer at all in our campus. And thankfully, oh wow, I see some classmates here. Uh, um, in 73 is when we got our mainframe uh, uh, IBM machine as a gift from West Germany. And luckily for uh, some of us, um, there were no restrictions on who could use the machine. Uh, even a guy who had curriculum-wise no business going anywhere near that machine was given unlimited access. And a computer club was started so that uh, given the fact that at that time the curriculum was very strict in terms of what courses you could take for credit, the only thing that we guys could have done as a computer science course, because they started with only a master's program and a PhD program at that time, was a Fortran course as a math option in the eighth or the ninth semester. That's it. Even getting, you know, switching to electronics wouldn't have helped because those guys also didn't do any computer science stuff. Nor did they do really any computer architecture kinds of things. They did, you know, base electronic stuff, but not uh, anything really computer specific. So I stuck with chemical engineering, but I was basically whiling away my time waiting to get into computer science uh, after my BTEC. So my parents were worried that I was going to flunk my chemical engineering because I was spending my spare time and more at the computer center. C. Mohan came to be called Computer Mohan and all that. Um, and, um, I was so crazy that, uh, of course, this was a time when you know guys like you who take so many things for granted didn't exist, right? Things like email and so on. So I had to write long-winding letters by hand and mail them in the regular post office for me to get hold of papers that were being published in the US, including the research lab that I ultimately joined. And uh, so I uh, went, and also even in the library, there was one copying machine, I think, and you had to pay a lot of money to get copies of articles and so on. Luckily for me, Professor C. R. Muthukrishnan, who was a professor in computer science, who along with Professor Mahabala, had come from IIT Kanpur to start the computer center in 73. And CRM, as he was called, was himself an IIT Madras alumnus, PGM, during his uh, uh, BTEC days. Uh, he, Muthukrishnan was very uh, supportive of whatever I was doing. And then there was Professor Nagarajan who had moved from chemical engineering to computer science. He was also encouraging all the silliness that I was doing, where I had nothing to do with computer science, but I would sometimes randomly go and sit in on some of this uh, M.Tech computer science classes and ask questions and irritate the heck out of the regular guys there because they couldn't care less. It was, you know, they had to do it, but I was there when, you know, forbidden fruit kind of thing. I had, was having fun. Uh, so 
at one point Mahabala said, why the heck are you doing all this? You should be there studying chemical engineering. Instead, you are coming here and, uh, you know, giving trouble to people here. This is, oh well. Um, so, I um, initially thought I will do a, a PhD in management science because the initial set of packages I was using at the computer center had to do with uh, discrete event simulation, continuous system simulation, linear programming and things like that. And then later on I noticed there was a problem in one of the packages. Uh, I tried to use some advanced feature in this GPSS package invoking some random programming language uh, routine in the middle of a simulation. I don't know how many of you know about this kind of language. It was more like an assembler language but high level assembler language for building simulations, this thing called GPSS, general purpose simulation system of IBM for discrete event simulations. Uh, so, when I use that particular feature, the program will abnormally end for those people who know what I mean, ab end as in the IBM terminology. Um, and it will do a core dump and uh, nobody could care less because IBM had given that package for free and nobody was interested in this fancy functionality that I was using. So, I could not seek help from anybody to figure out why it was doing this. And IBM by then had a advanced version which was a FOP. Uh, payment kind of version of this GPSS 5 as it was called, whereas the previous one was GPSS 360. So, one summer, summer of uh, 75, the end of my third year, here I am sitting with this, you know, paper dump, core dump as it was called, right, the machine language dump of what was in memory when this problem arose. And instead of having fun sitting in Vellore, which is where my parents lived at that time, and which is where I did my pre PUC kind of schooling. I am from Loyola College, pre-university. Um, I was going through this, guess what I was doing? I was reconstructing the logic of this program from a machine language, I was recreating the assembler version of it, trying to make sense of it. I had some logic manual available to me, but I did not know that there was a package which you could use to disassemble a program, a machine language thingy to at least come up with some symbolic names for the machine instructions and so on. Here I was manually doing it. So, in the process of doing all this, I figured out that I had to know a lot about uh, the internals of the operating system and there will be a branch somewhere and it was actually going into an I.O. routine. So, I had to distinguish between what was the packages code versus the system code and so on. So, I came to know a lot about system control blocks and all that in this operating system called OS VS1, which was a batch oriented operating system. So, at that point, I said this bare metal, close to the metal kind of thing is more exciting than all this application stuff on top. So, I am going to become a computer scientist. So, that is what made me become excited about hardcore computer science rather than this higher level packages and so on. Um, but then what happened was that I was so into all this learning languages, this, that myself. I said, who wants to sit and memorize words for this silly thing called GRE and things like that. Nor did I pay enough attention to chemical engineering. Professor Anant used to teach me by the way. Um, thermodynamics and all that. Uh, I just barely skimmed, I think I got maybe 7.5 out of 10 when I graduated. So, I barely made first class I think is what it used to be called. With distinction you had to be what 8.0 I think to get that. So, all sorts of fancy professors from America who I corresponded with said, oh, you know, here is a PhD thesis, read it and it will prepare you for your future research, blah, blah, blah. But when the time came for assistantships, nobody gave me anything except for University of Nebraska gave me half time uh, assistantship and nobody else really gave me anything and even the fancy schools did not even bother giving me admission let alone giving me aid. So, I said, hmm, should I go to the middle of nowhere, Lincoln, Nebraska uh, or should I take up UT Austin. So, at the last minute I actually decided good sense prevailed. I said, I will go to UT Austin even though they did not give any assistantship because it was fairly cheap and the university was fairly high up there in ranking, much better than Nebraska. So, I went there and um, of course, my parents were very worried and all that because there I was, hey, this is ridiculous. I think I am going to reboot this the hard way. Um, parents thought, what the heck, after one year also, if he does not get assistantship, uh, what is going to happen? Some of our faculty friends over there, they see guys, did not help matters. Mani Chandy, an IIT Madras alumnus was a professor, Jayadev Mishra was a professor, IIT Kanpur. These guys wanted to play it safe, not tell this joker coming from India something positive and then if things do not work out, they may get blamed. 
So they said even after a year of uh, being there, the chance of getting an assistantship are next to nothing and so on. In fact, it turned out all that was bogus because I could have at least gotten a teaching assistantship in some other department for programming and things like that. So as luck would have it, within 10 days after moving there, I was able to get a research assistantship. So all that it required was going in person and impressing the heck out of the people there than trying to, you know, through email, not even email, paper mail and such, you know, in spite of writing long ramayans about what all I had learned, blah, 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 and so on, they didn't have anything concrete in terms of, you know, grades or whatever. And GRE in advanced in computer science had just started, so I didn't take that. I took the engineering GRE advanced. And so all it required was eye-to-eye -eye kind of contact and, you know, impressing them. And so within 10 days, I got an assist assistantship. So that part was taken care of. I didn't have to worry about my, you know, being a burden on my parents and that sort of thing. But then the next thing that started was um, um, while I was good in terms of uh, doing my uh, computer science courses and such, and within four semesters, I was able to finish my PhD qualifier requirements. Um, the um, problem that came up, and by the way, in case you are wondering, UT Austin didn't require a, a, a master's to do a PhD. So with my BTEC in chemical, I was able to go straight for PhD in computer science. And they didn't really even have a credit or requirements for PhD. Strictly speaking, you could just do the PhD qualifying exams and then a thesis and you could be off. Although the committee generally tries to make sure that uh, you do have decent amount of general courses and all that that you have done. But strictly speaking, there was no uh, credit or requirements. And um, so in four semesters, I had to do five what were really advanced graduate level courses, which you could take as a regular course exam at the end, or you could take it as a PhD qualifier. The grading was different if you took it as a PhD qualifier. Committee decided pass or fail for people who took it as a qualifier. Whereas if you took it as a course, the course instructor did the grading and usual A, B, C, D and all that kind of thing. So my main headache was at that point uh, finding a thesis topic. So when I got that assistantship the first semester, the first, within the first 10 days, when it, things looked rosy, at the end of that semester, basically that thing got taken away, not because I was bad or anything, but it was a project that was funded by the National Security Agency on verifiable software. And a new contract monitor at the NSA said, oh, we don't want these non-American citizen jokers on this project. You know, who knows what the heck they might do. Crypto boxes and all that, where they were, even though we were not personally working on such things, the foreigners, they still didn't want any of the foreigners on the project. So I had to then find some other uh, means of assistantship. And this Chinese professor was a software engineering guy who had this grand vision of wanting to do some fancy um, uh,